Consider our planet Earth in space and these sample positions of an Earth satellite in circular orbit. Before the idea of inertia was understood, people thought that a force in the direction of motion was responsible for motion. They imagined angels pushing on the planets. Newton changed all that and taught us that the only force acting on a satellite acts toward the body it orbits. That's the gravitational force. And what if this force disappeared? Then the satellite would fly off in a straight line path. No force, no orbital path. Note that each of the force vectors are the same size and point to Earth's center. Same size because the satellite circles at the same distance from Earth. Note also that they're perpendicular to the orbital path. The 90 degree angle means there's no component of force along the orbital path, which further means no change in speed. From an energy standpoint, that means no change in kinetic energy. And since distance remains constant, no change in potential energy. So both kinetic energy and potential energy are constant all along the orbital path. So a satellite in circular orbit effectively coasts at an unchanging speed all the way around and around and around. Now things are different for a satellite in an elliptical orbit. Consider these sample positions for such a satellite. Since the distances from Earth are different, the forces are different. Weaker far from Earth and stronger when closer, in accord with the inverse square law. So the speeds are different also. Kepler was the first to discover the elliptical paths of planets about the Sun early in the 17th century. He discovered that planets travel fastest closest to the Sun and slowest farther away. But he had no explanation as to why. Just as a projectile tossed upward slows as it rises and speeds up as it returns, so it is with any satellite. Kepler never viewed a satellite as a projectile. That planets are projectiles falling around the Sun, just as our Moon is a projectile falling around Earth. This way of thinking escaped Kepler. Let's talk energy conservation. The sum of the potential energy and kinetic energy at any point along the satellite path is the same as at any other point. Hence, where the kinetic energy is greatest, potential energy is least, and vice versa. We can look at the changes in speed by considering the components of gravitational force along the satellite path. The component perpendicular to the satellite path, shown as a white vector here, doesn't affect speed, but changes the direction of motion, curving it away from a straight line path. More interesting is the component along the path, which we make purple here. That component of force changes speed. When in the same direction of, of motion, speed's increased. But here on the other side, the purple component slows the satellite. That's because the satellite is going against gravity there. So for our satellite, we see it has the least speed farthest from Earth and the most when closest. It falls around and around indefinitely. I want to leave you with a question. What becomes of the purple component of force along the satellite's path when the satellite is closest to and farthest from Earth? And more important, why? Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.